If you're enjoying this podcast, please leave a review. It can be short on Apple Podcasts, subscribe on YouTube, and follow and rate on Spotify. It not only provides the show with more visibility to support us as we grow, but I'll read my favorite reviews live on Nextalgia. So this one is from MoonBB89, titled New Favorite Pod. Nicole is a fantastic host, exclamation point. The episodes are well-researched and put together, and I also love that she has insight into the fashion industry. It's such a fun podcast, easy to listen to, and you'll learn something too. Absolutely love this pod. Can't wait for more episodes, exclamation point, two little baby heart emojis. Thank you so much to you, the listener, the viewer, for supporting the show, and I look forward to reading more of your reviews soon. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Nostalgia. I'm very excited because we're taking a trip down memory lane, not just any trip, but like super random niche, obscure things you may have forgotten about. And the goal here is to unlock those core memories and have you be like, whoa, I literally forgot about that. Something I think a lot about is the fact that I had a ton of toys when I was a kid. And then one day I didn't. Where did they go? Did my parents throw them away when we moved? What happened? I don't have answers, but the fact of the matter is, I know I had those toys. Now they're only just a memory. I mean, I could go around to tag sales, which is tag sales a Connecticut thing? I don't know. Tag sale, garage sale, yard sale, whatever. I could go there to find used stuffed animals or go to eBay to buy expired Spice Girls lollipops from 1998 for $500. But instead of collecting memorabilia, I have a Pinterest board. It's called Specific Nostalgic Things, and it's exactly that. So we're going to go through these items on this Pinterest board. They're not just things that I remember. They're things I had specifically. And again, there's a lot on it. So we're going to try to cover as much as possible. And I'm going to break it down into several categories, whether that's fashion, uh, electronics, dolls, games, uh, McDonald's and Burger King toys get their own category and more. So these references span the 90s and into the 2000s, but a lot of these things are not new to the 90s. They're revivals or remakes from previous decades. So as you've seen now, if you're a millennial with the trend cycle of things coming back from when you were a kid in the 90s, the same thing was happening to our parents who grew up in the 60s and the 70s. So 80s kids, even 70s kids, this one's for you too. And if you're like, why were there a bunch of revivals? Because people can make money off of it, which is, as Mrs. Potts once said, tale as old as time. You have to remember the 1990s was an economic boom. The GDP was rising, stock prices were soaring, and a little something called the internet was becoming a thing. So very broadly speaking, people had disposable income, they had money to spend, and consumer consumption was in. So if you're watching on YouTube or Spotify, you'll see a picture here on the screen of whatever I'm talking about. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or elsewhere, you can follow along on my Pinterest board that I've linked in the show notes, specific nostalgic things. So again, we're gonna go pretty quickly because we have a lot of ground to cover. Okay, our first category is toys, and Fisher-Price gets its own section because before you could use the stove or cut your own hair, you had a kid's version so you could feel like a grown-up. We had tape recorders, which were really cool. It was this little white tape recorder that came with a microphone, which was very important for me as I was always performing for my family. You would put some sing-along cassettes in there. This was really the precursor to the karaoke machine one of which I had in the early 2000s because, again, the show must go on. But tape recorder was absolutely essential as a young 90s kid. We had the Fisher-Price vacuum, which why not teach your kids to vacuum and clean the house from a young age? I think that was the motivation behind that one. We had a kitchen where I don't remember any food coming with it, but it was always cool to kind of have your own little setup. There was the beauty parlor 
and a flashlight as well with the coolest little aesthetic. You had a white light, you had a green light. It was very cool. And of course, the Fisher Price Dream House that had tiny little chairs and furniture. I loved it. But what I loved even more, and this perfectly segues into our next section, our next topic of electronics is the Fisher Price Dream House computer game, which you know I mentioned in the episode with Jamie from Millennial Misery that this was the biggest core memory that I unlocked because that computer game, wow, I'm going to link it again in the show notes because it's extremely important and there's a full version of it on YouTube and it's just this computer game means so much to me. You'll get it when you see it. Other very, very important computer games that are also on YouTube, I'll link this one in the show notes too, Barbie Magic Hairstyler. So fun. You would get to choose her whole look and then you would even get to choose what occasion she was going to. So amazing. I was obsessed with I Dream a Genie when I was a kid. A lot of those older shows were on Nick at Night. And so I had... It was almost like Polly Pocket, where you had a genie bottle. One side was the beach. One side was her wedding. What if you wanted to go to the beach before you got married? And so it had this this toy, but it also had a floppy disk in it, which I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I don't really know anything about floppy disks. Much like fax machines, there's just some 90s technology that was being phased out that I just truly don't understand and floppy disks are one of them. I assume that it was the precursor to CDs. So you would have this floppy disk and there was a slot in your computer you could put it in and play. Let's see. Barbie also had a cell phone, which it was so 90s. It was great. It was a flip phone with an antenna and the Spice Girls had a cell phone as well, although I had it and then returned it once I found out it wasn't a real cell phone. But this was 1998 and children didn't have cell phones yet. I don't know. I guess I just wanted to be the first elementary schooler with a cell phone. But when you pressed a button and they're like, girl power, I'm like, this is how am I going to call my family with whom I live because I'm eight years old without having a real cell phone? These are the questions that I was asking. But anyway, it reminded me there was this store in the Waterbury Mall, which is actually hilarious. If you've seen the viral TikTok video of the guy who went to the abandoned Hollister store, it's in that same mall, which I was cracking up over. Um, there was that store that had imports. So it had Japanese anime, it had Sailor Moon stuff, it had Spice Girls memorabilia. So that's where I would find some of these cool um Spice Girls things that weren't readily available elsewhere, like the cell phone. And I think I had like a journal, a notebook, but I'm not going to go on a tangent about malls, I promise, because we talk about malls so much. They are so important, but I feel like there are three categories of malls. One mall that would have the imports, one where you would go with your friends and meet up with people from MySpace, and another mall where you would go to Abercrombie, right? Doesn't that make sense? It makes sense for me in central Connecticut. But anyway, um, Spice Girls had a cell phone. Tamagotchi, extremely important to me. It was a saga in my second grade journal. One day I thought that my Tamagotchi had died and I was so upset. But then I just said, oh, she actually just had a baby. She's fine. And life went on. But it was still a saga. Let's see, Yak Back. Yak Back was pretty cool. It was this little device that you would speak in and then it would repeat back the words. So this was before any kind of voice memos or anything like that. So it was kind of like a little walkie talkie. It was cute. We had going into the 2000s, we had hit clips, which were super cool. Those are available at Limited too. And first it came in a boom box, like a tiny boom box. And then it came in a tiny... I don't even know what you would call it, but you stick the hit clip in there and the hit clip is a tiny little square. It's like a micro chip and it has one minute of a song on it, either 30 seconds or one minute or both only, only. And you would kind of collect them and they came on a little keychain, and I don't know, it was before the singles era right? That was when you still had to go to the store and you had to buy an entire CD 
of songs of 10 or 12 songs. You wouldn't just listen to that one top favorite song unless it was released separately. So that was kind of cool. Dolls Mania, which I was absolutely obsessed with. And iZone cameras. These were very cool. I actually still have one photo that I took with the iZone camera. So it's a Polaroid. It's just very, 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 very small. I was trying to make with my fingers how small it is. It's very small. Um, so it's kind of like, why? But anyway, moving on to fashion and beauty. Probably the best infomercial product was the Harigami. So essentially it was a slap bracelet, AKA a piece of metal, <laughs> thinly veiled in velvet fabric. And so the idea was that you could put this contraption in your hair to shape it in all different ways. And it even came with a booklet to show you how many ways you could put your hair up. And I always had such thick hair. So I had to have two sometimes so I could do, I could fit all of my hair in it. And of course it would always snap the wrong way. It would, it would hurt your arm. It was a lot of effort and work for a result that never looked like the picture. It never looked like the picture, but it was great. Headband combs. I used to wear these. Okay. I played soccer for a year. Only time I ever did hashtag sports. And all I was doing was cartwheels in the field and picking flowers. And my mom's like, let's keep her in dance. But I used to wear these headband combs and mine had little jewels on the front too, uh, to keep your hair out of your face when you were doing things like playing sports or just being cute. I like them, but yeah, you would poke yourself in the eye, whatever. It was not a good scenario. Butterfly clips, we all know and love. Not necessarily those tiny little plastic ones that you see at Target now, but the one the actual butterfly clips where it's a silver metal clip that <laughs> it just gets stuck in your hair and pulls your hair out. But it had the butterfly where, how do I describe this for someone who can't see it? It's not, it, I guess it's metal too. And it has these movable kind of bouncy wings that have glitter on them. Again, something that seemed very easy to use in theory, but in practice, um, it could be a little bit painful. <laughs> also, we had, I think these are called hair bobbles, it said, which I would not even know what to call these. They're little ponytail holders where there's a little half translucent colored ball on one end, and then there's a ball on the other end. I never quite knew exactly how to use these, but they were very of the times, as were choker necklaces. And the chokers that look like tattoos, I think that when those came back in the mid to late 2010, so remember when we were wearing shoelaces as necklaces in 2016? Yes. So when chokers were coming back, someone was like the tattoo choker. And we were all like, what? No way. There's no way we are ready for a 90s resurgence. But the 90s resurgence was back. I think that the choker tattoo necklace was the first thing that made people who were growing up in the 90s that like, yep, you are old enough to see an entire trend cycle. And I, I never say old in a bad way. You know this. Anyway, Bath and Body Works, Roll On Glitter. So this collection was called Art Stuff. I really don't know why, but this Roll On Glitter, Bath and Body Works had the, the power they had over us. Cucumber, melon, scented lotion. Oh, wow. We just had to be there. And this body glitter, you would always put it on before the middle school dance, obviously, because why wouldn't you? And every month, the same thing would happen. I would put on this Bath and Body Works roll-on glitter, break out into hives immediately for like a half an hour. And luckily, by the time I got to the dance, it would have cleared up. But it's like, really? that I was going to that length for middle school dance perfection. 
I'm definitely allergic to something in that body glitter. Speaking of fragrant things, we had Bottled Emotion, which was a fragrance. I don't even know where they carried it. Probably Claire's, but I had the purple one and it had the little spaceship on it. And I thought that was very cool. Lip Shades was a kind of like a lipstick and it came in this little silver container and that was cool because you felt you were a kid but you felt like you were grown up and wearing lipstick we had lip smackers which were absolutely just the most popular lip balm out there they came in so many different flavors and varieties they were sparkly we loved it and then in the early 2000s there were sour smackers too. Remember that? Where it was lip smackers? It was a lip gloss, but it was sa like sour, maybe a sour apple. It was just sour themed and everyone was like, what's going on with this? But I don't know. It was big for a second. The next category is a McDonald's slash Burger King toys. So this was hype beast culture before hype beast culture. This was like Supreme before Supreme. People were absolutely obsessive about McDonald's and Burger King toys. They would come numbered in the packages so you would know before you even opened it which toy you had and if you had the one that you needed because, of course, you had to go to McDonald's or Burger King eight times and collect all of them. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? The most popular one, I would say, was when T.Y. Beanie Babies came to McDonald's, people were literally fighting each other. <laughs> you have to watch the documentary about Beanie Babies. It is crazy. People woke up and chose violence. They went to McDonald's and got Beanie Baby toys and chose violence. Um, very, very interesting phenomenon. Next, Halloween themed chicken McNuggets. So these were absolutely essential to our well being as children. McDonald's would just go out for Halloween. They also gave out Halloween buckets so you could go trick-or-treating with them. The issue being that they were relatively small. And then if you really got to a point where you were just bringing in the candy, you'd have to swap it out for a pillowcase anyway. So they would more so be the buckets that you would have at your house giving out candy. A little bit smaller, but Halloween was big. We had 101 Dalmatians where I think they actually did have a 101 toys, which is absolutely obscene. There was Winnie the Pooh, little plushy clip. Who doesn't love a clip? You put it on your sky blue LL Bean custom embroidered backpack and it looks good and we loved it. And then also this one was so important to me. Polly Pocket. There was a watch. It was shaped like a butterfly and you opened up the top of the watch. It's not technically a watch as there's no clock on it. It's just on a bracelet like a watch. You open it up and there's two kids on a seesaw in front of a, a beautiful sun. I'm like, this is amazing. So I would say that that was the fast food toy that, that really exceeded my expectations. Don't forget, you can join us on Substack for our weekly newsletter, nickstalgia.substack.com. Paid subscribers get bonus episodes where you will have the opportunity to pick a topic. Ooh, fun. We have a roundup of pop culture news, a time capsule, trivia, all kinds of fun stuff. Nickstalgia.substack.com. You're going to love it. Next, we're going to get into dolls. I would like to preface this in saying that I'm not mentioning American Girl dolls. They get a whole, they might get two other episodes. We have a lot, a lot of things to cover there, and I can't keep you here all day. So that is another story. Here we go. Speaking of Polly Pocket, there was a Polly Pocket where she had a storybook. It was very, very cool. And I had one that was kind of like under the sea. Uh, I found it on Etsy maybe, but it was like super expensive. Again, I don't technically need to buy the memorabilia of a Polly Pocket storybook, but also, I don't know. 
I might. Ask me again later. Okay, these, these are not necessarily dolls. They're animals, but I want to do like an animal subcategory. So we have pound puppies. We have puppy surprise. We have doodle bear. And the memory that I unlocked while researching for this, tea bunnies. Do you remember tea bunnies? Okay, they were bunnies having tea. And they wore little hats. Are you serious? I love this. We also had Baby All Gone, where she had a spoon and you would feed her. And then the little berries on the spoon would miraculously be gone. It was like the technology. We loved it. Speaking of technology, there was a Cabbage Patch doll. Which, granted, Cabbage Patch was a phenomenon of the 80s. And into the early 90s, it was still pretty popular. I had one that came in a little carrying case, like a, a mini doll. And my sister had one in the late nineties, but it got recalled because it was the kind that ate snacks. So you would put the carrot stick or whatever in the cabbage patches mouth. She would chew it. There was a mechanism that made the carrot stick go into the doll and come out of her backpack. But then what would happen was these kids were cuddling with their cabbage patch dolls and sleeping with them at night and then they had to recall it because it would eat kids hair and <laughs> and then we got rid of it because my sister got scared but it's a legitimate it's a valid concern the cabbage patch eating people's hair like that is a major problem <laughs> but anyway um let's see oh speaking of so my sister and i both had generation girl barbies Laura, who I had was an artist, Chelsea played the guitar. And before I go into Barbies, which is a su another subcategory, we had Sky Dancers. Remember Sky Dancers? They were these girlies who had little wings and you would pull the string and then they would gain momentum and fly away and their wings would open and they would go pretty far too. It was very fun. And Sky Dancer, not to be confused with Ribbon Dancer, which was an infomercial from the mid-90s where it was literally just a metallic ribbon, a long ribbon on a stick. And you would run around and dance. I don't know. It was fun at the time. Okay. Barbie. I had so many Barbies. It's obscene. Um, but I'm going to mention them because they're important. And I want to see if you had any of these Barbies too. Okay. We had Movin' Groovin' Barbie, Jewel Hair Mermaid, Western Stampin' Barbie, which she literally had a stamp on her boot, which was neat. Um, Tropical Splash Barbie, who I absolutely loved. She was scented and I searched on the internet to find out what that scent was and apparently one of Rihanna's perfumes has the same scent. So I have to buy that, obviously. And then also Joe Malone has a scent as well that's the same as Tropical Splash Barbie. So I went to Sephora and spelled it uh, just so I could really be sure. And it does. It does smell like Tropical Splash Barbie. But for a 1.5 ounce or something like that, it was $75. So I'm like, no, I would rather just buy a vintage Tropical Splash Barbie for $75 on eBay. So anyway, that project is still a work in progress. Um, there's Working Out Barbie, and she is not to be confused with Hot Skating Barbie, which is a Barbie that reminds me the most of the shots of Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling uh, filming the Barbie movie that's coming out. So we had many many sporty Barbies, gymnast Stacy, complete with uneven bars that I definitely broke. So forget the uneven bars. It, it's now only a floor routine. We had Atlanta 1996 Olympics, New, um, New York Knicks and LA Lakers. There were uh, NBA Barbies. We had phone fun skipper. She came with a phone too. Again, not a real cell phone. We didn't have cell phones back then. Teacher Barbie, Shopping Fun Barbie and Kelly, Big Brother Ken and Baby Brother Tommy, which 
was Tommy Barbie's brother? So are they, would they be like brother-in-laws? I don't know. I'm not going to ask any more questions about that. There was Happy Meal Stacy and Whitney because we were all fueled by McDonald's on a daily basis. Um, okay. These were my favorites. We had a Galaxy Barbie, Camp Barbie, Twirling Ballerina, which I remember having named her Gina Lola Brigida. Like, you know you're Italian when <laughs> you name your Barbie that. Um, let's see. I had two sets of Spice Girls Barbies. Oh, my God. Spoiled. And I had four, the four girls of S Club 7 dolls, and they sang. Um, apparently I didn't even know that the three guys had dolls too. I was not interested in them. Um, there was also a slumber party Barbie and the difference between her and regular Barbies was that she was plush. She was, yeah, plush where you could actually, the idea was that you would actually bring her to a sleepover. Whereas Barbie made out of hard plastic would like poke your eye out or something. Um, let's see. Oh, around the world. This was my absolute favorite. I have just, I was always fascinated with culture around the world and I didn't travel really when I was a kid. So I felt that having these different Barbies from around the world was almost like being able to go there. I, I thought it was super fun to play and <laughs> I guess I was kind of playing United Nations at the time because everyone would come and, and represent their country. Um, we had, let's see, we had French, Ghanaian, Indian, Norwegian, Moroccan, German, Polynesian, Arctic, Native American, Chilean, Austrian, Mexican, Japanese, and Thai. We really had an entire assembly. But uh, like we had Barbie in the U.S., U.K. had Cindy, which I didn't have, but I did have Italy's answer to Barbie. Her name was Tanya. I can't find an exact picture of any of the Tanyas that I had, but um, whereas Cindy looked very close to Barbie, Tanya looked a little bit different in the design, but yeah, she she was a good one too. So we are going to move into games. Ah, uh, this was because we're talking about a time where it was the end of the analog era. This was really before computer games kind of took over and video games were really popular, but I didn't play video games. There were board games. So I loved one called Masterpiece, which I never actually played. To be honest, Masterpiece is a game from the 70s. And basically, you would have all of these postcards with famous works of art. And then how you're supposed to play the actual game is that you bid on the art pieces like an auction. I didn't want to do that. I just took all of the different arts and put them in you know, my scene of playing Barbie. So it was like they were art collectors or they were showing off their art, which I thought was very tasteful. Anyway, we had Guess Who, which was an old one too. That was fun. Trouble, trouble, popping out of trouble. Um, Heartthrob. Okay, we got this game at a tag sale and thought it was the funniest thing ever. I think I was about 10 years old. And Heartthrob is the most 80s thing I've ever seen in my life, where basically you would get to pick your boyfriend. Okay, think of the MTV show Next. It was like that, except 80s. So you would get a card and it would have the guy with his crazy haircut. Like everything is so dated. That's one game that I got rid of that I actually would buy again because it's that representative of the times you would get a picture of the guy with his name and then I think you would draw a card and it would have his attributes or whatever but again it was more fun for us to, to just go through the cards and be like oh my god the 80s are so funny they're crazy um let's see hungry hungry hippos absolutely classic pretty pretty princess another classic don't wake daddy that was fun. It was 
is it like mouse trap where basically each move you make you get one closer to kind of like breaking the threshold and then you know if you, <laughs> daddy would be sleeping and then he would pop up and then you would lose and you have to go back to the beginning but that was a fun game and bop it which not gonna lie I was very good at but then they had to make a million variations. It's like, stop, stop messing up a good thing. Okay. Books. Books are not toys, but honestly, this Pinterest board just goes there. Okay. It goes there. We have Spice Girls unofficial emphasis on the unofficial as Mandy Moore would go on to say in my pocket books, the musical life of Gustav Moll incredible. It was a storybook that came with a cassette tape. Inspiring. Um, I love the Little Miss Sunshine series. I would get these books from my elementary school library. Um, Once Upon a Potty. Wow. I mean, talk about trailblazing. There was an accompanying video. Let's see. We had Roly Poly Spider, Barbie books. Okay, these ones technically are not on my Pinterest board because they're too obscure, but they're worth telling you about. One is Nicole Digs a Hole, which was obviously a relevant book to me in particular. It's about a girl named Nicole. She goes in her yard. She's digging a hole and she gets hungry. And so she goes inside and has a snack. And what she comes to find out is that there are moles in the backyard who fill up the holes with dirt. So now she's upset because she literally spent all day digging and now it's ruined. So it's a, a very good book though. And you know, it's about resilience um, and just facing obstacles and being flexible and staying optimistic toward your future, even if things don't go the way you planned. Those were the main takeaways that I had from this book. We had Nina Nina Ballerina, which is about a girl who breaks her arm and still has an amazing ballet recital. There's Halitosis, which I saw was called Dog Breath, but I definitely had a copy that was called Halitosis, where it's about this dog that has such bad breath and his family's like, oh my God. But then these burglars come in and then he makes the burglars pass out with his bad breath. So he saves the day. I mean, <laughs> no, no further comment. Um, also I know an old lady who swallowed a fly. I literally had nightmares about the woman in this book my entire childhood. So I don't know what that says about me. Okay. Next we have some random things. We have a skip it. So that was a, a toy I really enjoyed. You would go outside, put it, there was a little circle that you would put around your ankle. And then there was a long plastic arm attached to a ball. And so you would swing your leg around so that the arm would go around. And then before the ball hits your foot, you would jump over it. Hence, skip it. You would kind of be skipping. I always found that really fun. We had fortune tellers. That was pretty cool where you would get a piece of paper and there would usually be red, yellow, green, blue. And then you would write a fortune inside and mash also was extremely important. Yeah, you would write mash, mansion, apartment, shack, or house. And that's where you would live. And then you would have different categories. Who was going to be your husband? How many kids you were going to have? Because, <laughs> of course, those are the only ways your life can go. Um, but it's like you'll live in a mansion with Leonardo DiCaprio, have three kids. Oh, your job's going to be whatever. It was actually pretty fun. And the more ridiculous your answers, the more fun it would be. Let's see. A magic eight ball. I really loved and I had, and I actually still have one now. This you wouldn't have in your house. You would play it at school, but there would be a rainbow parachute. It was so fun. So it goes red, yellow, green, blue all around. And you would play all sorts of games. I mean, when people say things were more simple back in the day, that's a perfect example. 
Did you like this episode? Do you like this podcast? Well, thanks. Make sure to follow, share, rate, review on whatever platform you're accessing this from. And again, I super, super appreciate your support. If you love pop culture of the past, present, and yes, even the future, connect with me on social media at Nicole Tremalio on IG, TikTok, and Twitter. Don't forget to check out our weekly newsletter, nostalgia.substack.com. And lastly, if you have a podcast, I record mine with Riverside. I'm going to link it for you in the show notes. Thanks again. I hope that this unlocked some core memories for you like it did for me. Make sure to share this episode with your childhood best friend, your sibling, or whoever you just love talking about the stuff with. And I will see you next time. Bye.